Keisha Marie White, a bright spirit, beloved by all that knew her, until lupus changed everything. The ravages of rheumatoid arthritis had sapped her energy and fighting spirit, and blood clots in her toes resulted in a partial amputation. Finally, in April 2014, the cruelest blow of all came admitted to a hospital in Greenville, North Carolina. She was diagnosed with acute renal failure that ultimately led to her demise. The hospital, now known as ECU Health Medical Center, was named Pitt Memorial Hospital and Vidant Medical Center. Various media outlets attempted to contact the hospital for comment, but have yet to receive a response. Amidst their grief, Keisha's family members have questioned the circumstances of her death while in the care of a facility they had admitted her to multiple times before. It's alleged that medical personnel failed to uphold their Hippocratic oath for Keisha's health. Although Keisha was struggling for her life at Vidant Medical Center, her condition worsened. According to White's family, she complained about feeling hot and displayed signs of confusion. Keisha had been pulling at her cardiac leads and was complaining of being hot and was trying to lay on the cool floor, they said. Medical staff then restrained her after pulling out her catheter. Yet the exact events of that day remain unknown. Avens declared the restraints were employed for peaceful reasons. She'd exhibited signs of confusion and restlessness, all because of a lack of oxygen. The cannula at her nostrils had proven ineffectual as she continued to complain of difficulty breathing. But while White slumbered, her condition deteriorated. To make matters worse, those caring for her failed to alert the nurse practitioner or doctor that her health was declining. Even more disturbing, someone had silenced the monitor measuring her vitals, leaving White strapped to a bed as she suffered a heart attack. Avens clarified no one rechecked the oxygen levels and prescribed O2 wasn't administered until after 2 a.m. Her mother revealed the cause of death, anoxic brain injury, a consequence of oxygen deprivation, and cardiopulmonary arrest, cardiac arrest. A tragedy indeed. A code was called at the hospital at 5.51 a.m. on May 10th, 2014. Keisha's oxygen was low, only 62%, recorded hours before 2 a.m. The nurse did not provide treatment or check her vitals until the end of her shift at 7 a.m. Keisha's aunt is resolute in her belief that the hospital bears responsibility for her death and justice has not been served. She asserts that Keisha would not have been treated badly if she was not white. The nurse, entrusted with the task of rendering aid, chose instead to place Keisha in restraints out of agitation from her responses to hypoxia, confusion, restlessness, and difficulty breathing. Her brain cells were deprived of oxygen until they passed away due to an anoxic brain injury. The nurse on duty that fateful night ignored the outcry of her colleagues and refused to provide oxygen to Keisha White. To make matters worse, the nurse disregarded instructions from the monitoring department and neglected to place her on life-saving monitors. Even in her last hours, they kept Keisha restrained and slumped unresponsive as a CNA, care partner, encountered her lifeless body. Cynthia Bunch Avens, Keisha's mother, could not comprehend why her daughter had been a victim of blatant patient abuse and neglect. Further shocked by falsified medical records post-mortem, in an attempt for retribution, Bevins took the hospital to court, yet instead of justice being served, they offered a financial settlement that left her disheartened. Despite health complications derailing Keisha's education early on, she had attended Halifax County Public Schools and studied cosmetology at Halifax Community College. 30 days after Keisha Marie White perished in a North Carolina hospital, her mother, Cynthia Bunch Avens, received an unexpected visit. Three solemn representatives from the medical center delivered details on how the machines monitoring Keisha had stopped responding, sending up a red flag of patient abuse and neglect. My husband was in the meeting, recalls Avens in an emotional Reddit video, but he never told me what they said. Was it now clear that this was no accident? Was there something more sinister at play? Furtive alterations to medical records only added fuel to the fire. What was behind these terrible deaths befalling black women under medical care? Studies prove that black women face multiple roadblocks when seeking proper medical care. It matters not their wealth or social station. Serena Williams, tennis luminary and world-renowned champion, nearly died during childbirth in 2017 from a pulmonary embolism due to her healthcare provider's negligence. Her recollection of the incident, 
No one was listening to what I was saying. And then, in the hospital room with my parents and in-laws, I felt like I was dying. All I could think was, I'm dying, I'm dying. Oh my God. Bias still endangers the lives of patients of color today, leading to misdiagnosis and discounted symptoms. Only a few medical centers have implemented training in differentiating implicit bias, a knell for those unable to access such courses and treatments.